Hello and welcome to Ivory Blush Roses. My name is Lisa Boney and today we are going to take a look at my primary YLP or year-long project that I'm working on. This is actually going to be part of a larger year-long project that my daughter and I are working on. I love the old saying, use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without. That extends to my sewing and crazy quilting. I often cut up old clothing and damaged linens to reuse in my projects, and I cut up most of my fabric scraps into smaller pieces for pocket prayers and other tiny totable projects. This allows these old clothes that are too worn out to resell or donate to live on with new purpose for the maximum amount of time possible. Another bonus of using old clothes this way is that it keeps them out of the landfill and prevents the need from shipping them to Africa, India, or China to be remanufactured into something else. I can do this on a small family scale right here. With my daughter, we are going to turn this old pile of jeans, which the family started saving for me about four years ago, into some picnic quilts for each of the families that have contributed. So probably six to eight quilts or more. We have lots of ideas and of course there may be a few side projects along the way such as a few tote bags and purses. If you're wondering what a picnic quilt is, it is simply a durable quilt that you can throw in the back of the car for impromptu picnics or just a clean spot to sit on the ground at the playground. We'll likely back them with flannel or maybe old cotton shirting. Because they're already heavy due to the denim, there won't be any batting. There is a link to my Pinterest page on denim picnic quilts in the description box below. The quilt we are making for me is going to be a crazy quilt. It will be my primary year-long project that I'll be working on. Let me know in the comments section if you would be interested in seeing the other more traditional quilts that we make as well. Once we took all the denim out of the boxes and spread it across the bed, we were astonished to see how much there was. We started with the piles at one end of the bed and started cutting them up, saving all the fabric, but trimming away the seams, pockets, zippers, etc. At first we sat in the living room, but it wasn't long before we moved to the dining room table. That helped things go faster. Before long, the piles on the bed started to get smaller. It felt like we cut up denim forever, but in all, it really only took just a few days. And the piles of cut fabric got bigger. So did the piles of pockets, zippers, and the nicer double-sewn selvages. We saved those bits, um, and especially the zippers, because my daughter does a fair amount of clothing repair and the short zippers used in blue jeans are often hard to come by. Once all the denim, along with a few pairs of twill and canvas pants were cut up, we sorted the fabric by fiber content. They are sorted into piles of cotton twill and canvas, 100% cotton denim, and then denim with spandex. What we found was that nearly every pair of women's jeans we cut up had spandex in them, and we found that fabric to be much thinner and much more likely to have worn through and torn, while the men's denim was much heavier and far less likely to have worn through. We are still going to use the denim with spandex, but we're going to be using it in smaller pieces to hopefully give it more stability in the long run. For the crazy quilt, I'll be using the 100% cotton denim as I think it will be easier to sew through since it's the only quilt that's going to get embroidered. I'm also going to be using quite a lot of the worn through spots and hope to play with some Japanese stitching techniques to repair them. In the next video, we'll be looking at the process of assembling the blocks. Watch for that in the coming week. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, click on the bell to be notified of new episodes, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.